Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with bread and butter pizza. That's right, thanks to a little bit of butter and one extra but very simple step, we are turning what's usually a very sad insipid substitute into what is by far the best no-dough pizza hack ever. This really did come out amazingly well, and if you're a fan of Detroit pizza, you are going to love this, since the taste and texture are scarily close. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is put a few dots of butter on a sheet pan, which is going to stick to our parchment paper and help keep it in place. Otherwise, that stuff tends to slip and slide around. And yes, foil here would probably work fine, as would a silpat. But the best texture will be produced by parchment paper. And then once our pan is papered, we will lay down six slices of French bread or Italian bread. And while I've done this with fresh bread, a couple day old stale bread does work better. So if you're using fresh, maybe slice it and leave it out overnight. Or you could just pop it in the oven for a few minutes, just to dry it out a little bit. But regardless, what we'll do next is generously butter both sides. And the reason we have to butter both sides is because we need this butter to help us do two things. One on each side. Right, the bottom is going to help us get a beautiful crispy crust, whereas the butter on the top side is going to insulate the bread from the pizza sauce. And besides being the key to the whole operation here, if you've tried our Segreto pasta sauce, which is basically a simple tomato sauce with butter and Parmesan in it, you know how amazingly well butter and tomato goes together. So the butter really does work beautifully here for a few different reasons. But anyway, once that's been accomplished, we will take some Reggiano Parmesan, and we'll do a generous grating on each slice. All right, not too, too thick of a layer, but we do want full coverage. And if there was ever a recipe where you wanted to use real, actual Parmesan cheese, this is the one. This one and every other one, but especially this one. And once we have that grated over as shown, we can give that a quick press and then a flip so those slices end up cheese side down. And what's gonna happen as these bake, that cheese and butter is gonna fuse together and caramelize and brown onto the bottom of the pan. And eventually, as you'll see, we'll produce a crust that's not just incredibly flavorful, but also, and maybe more importantly, crispy and crunchy. All right, so our bottoms have been topped and positioned, which means we can finish these off by spooning our pizza sauce over the top. And we just wanna do enough here to cover, spreading it all the way to the edge. All right, even though this is a quick and easy pizza hack, we still wanna use pizza best practices which of course means not overloading these slices with too much sauce and toppings. But anyway, we'll go ahead and spread over our favorite pizza sauce, which is probably the recipe you got off Food Wishes, but really anything here is gonna work. And once that's done, we are definitely not gonna top this with cheese and pepperoni. Oh no, one of the big secrets here is to give this a pre-baking, which is why we're gonna go ahead and pop this into the center of a 450 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes or until our only halfway done bread and butter pizza looks like this. And during this relatively short baking period, two things have probably happened. Right, that pizza sauce on top is kind of caramelized a little bit and maybe dried out a touch. Plus we've given the bottoms of these slices a nice head start getting crispy and crunchy. And that's it, now that phase one is done, we can move on to final production, which means we can add our toppings. And for me, that's gonna be some mozzarella cheese and some sliced pepperoni since that is my favorite kind of pizza. And while it does take a little longer to put on, I like to dice my mozzarella, since I think it's a really good way to see if you're putting the right amount on. Okay, a man has to know his limitations, and if I grate the mozzarella, I always end up piling too much on the top. But anyway, suit yourself. I mean, you are after all the Chef John of how to put your cheese on. But like I said, I'm a dicer, which I think is great. And that's it, once our cheese is down, we can add whatever toppings we want, which as I said, for me is gonna be a few slices of pepperoni. But as long as you don't overload it, any and all of your favorite pizza toppings will work with this technique. Right, there's really no difference between this and regular pizza. And that's it, once those are topped to our liking, we will pop those back into the center of our 450 degree oven for another 10 to 12 minutes, or until our cheese and pepperoni starts to brown, and the bottoms of these slices are perfectly crisp and caramelized. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, and speaking of crisp bottoms, you can just leave these on the pan, but I do like to transfer them onto a cooling rack so those bottoms don't steam on the pan and maybe get a little less crispy. So this would be an optional step, 
But since we probably want to let these cool down for a few minutes anyway, why not? And after waiting very impatiently for a couple minutes, I went ahead and grabbed a slice and bit in. And that was, well, let's just listen. Oh yeah, that sounds good. But don't worry, the whole thing's not crunchy. All right, that is just the bottom surface, which is extremely crispy and crunchy. But the rest of the crust slash bread is soft and tender, but thanks to that butter is not soggy. And like I already said, above and beyond texture, butter tastes really good with tomato sauce and Parmesan. So I'm not gonna say this might actually be better than regular pizza, but I'm definitely not gonna say it's not. And in related news, I'm way too modest to call myself a genius, but if somehow you've already figured out this trick, and you've been making a quick and easy version of pizza this way, you, my friend, are a genius. But anyway, I went ahead and finished that piece, loving every single bite. And then I plated one more up next to a nice Caesar salad. Since because we want to live a long, healthy life, we can't just eat pizza by itself. In fact, if we have any kids watching, I have a very special message just for you. Do not, under any circumstances, let your parents just serve pizza by itself. All right, I want you to insist they also serve a salad alongside. I know, your parents aren't crazy about salads and vegetables, but it's our job to look out for them. But anyway, that's it, what I'm calling bread and butter pizza. For centuries, people have been slapping sauce and cheese on bread and tossing it in the oven and try to call it pizza. But it just never really works because that bread gets soggy. But by insulating our bread with the butter, we do not have that problem. And this really does come out extraordinarily well. Oh, and at the beginning, I did compare the taste and texture to a Detroit-style pizza, where that cheese around the edges of the pan caramelizes and almost separates, and that butter fat kind of soaks into the crust, along with the pepperoni fat. Well, even though it happened a little differently here, the final product, believe it or not, is very, very close. But whether you're a fan of Detroit-style pizzas specifically, or just great pizzas in general, I could not love this easy and quick technique anymore, and I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.